And while we're here, breeder101.com. Um, I've got my courses going now. You can go see them at breeder101.com. They're all video, uh, sub, um, video uh, courses that you don't have to download, don't have to run an app. They do cost a bit of money, but typically less than a vet visit. And I think you'll find them very useful because part of the problem you've got with all my YouTube stuff is it's spread all over the place. So to find stuff is difficult. These courses are specific things like how to get dogs pregnant, how to get your timing right, how to raise puppies, how to sell puppies. They're all individual courses. Once you sign up for one, you earn it forever. Uh, Santos Bartolome. Oh, someone's just saying nice things about our, our litter that Tammy had. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they are nice, pretty puppies. Yes. Um, Marie-Yves de Gagnes. My two and a half year old Frenchie is hopefully seven days pregnant. She's a little bit of brownish mucus in the past couple of days. Um, she does not have a fever. She's been doing great. Should I worry? When do you start showing signs of pregnancy? So um, any time that a dog has a discharge, specifically after you've done an AI, you have to be worried about pyometria. And I've got videos on this that you can go look up. But, but, but basically, if a dog is having a discharge, then it's either nothing is particularly important or it's an open pyometra, which can be treated with antibiotics. But the, really the sign of this is temperature. If a temperature got, dog got temperature 102 or higher, time to go to the vet. Your dog doesn't, just keep an eye on her and hopefully the discharge goes away. Uh, when will you start to see that she's pregnant? Well, you can do a ultrasound test or a relaxing pregnancy test. I like to do those around day 30, they're more reliable. Um, you're not going to see much of day 17. You might see some behavioral changes. The first signs that you typically see that you've successfully bred a dog is if it's never had puppies before, its nipples are very small, they get bigger. And then of course after that you might see some morning sickness, a little bit of vomiting, a little bit of lethargy, a little bit of change in behavior, a bit more clingy to you. And then of course the big thing is the tummy that's swelling. But you typically don't see a tummy swelling until five weeks or later. Uh... Alfonso Lopez, I have a fat, big fat puppy with swimmer. How long do you leave the tape on for? So what's going to happen is you put tape on the puppy. The next day or that evening, the tape's going to be off. And if the puppy's not getting up properly by itself, put it back on again. So I don't think you're going to find the tape's going to stay on there for very long. But if you're in doubt about this, take the tape off and see if the puppy's now standing up properly. If it is, you're done with the tape. Blue Ribbon French Bulldogs of Texas, do you have any ideas on getting milk in? Mine is a singleton, and mum isn't getting much milk at all. Yeah, well, so part of the problem here is, is that the puppy's nursing on mum, bringing the milk in. And since you've got a single puppy nursing, she's not getting a lot of input from that to produce more milk. You've just got to work at this. I mean, there, supposedly fenugreek seed uh, is something that can help bring mother's milk in. I've never tried it. It's a natural product. You might give it a shot. That's the only thing that I can tell you to do. And of course, in the interim, Make sure your puppy's graining half an ounce a day, and if it's not, supplement with goat's milk. Either bottle feed if you can, or tube feed if you have to. Snack Atticu says, is my dog a fluffy carrier? His dad, dog was a visual fluffy. Yes, every dog has to be a fluffy carrier. Uh, Joel Fangio says, what colors can I get out of this breeding? I think this is the one I just answered. No, no, it's not. Here we go. So what have we got here? We've got the male is DD Blue. Big B, Little B, one copy of Testable Chocolate. NCO, one copy of Coco. Uh, EME, one copy of Cream, was bred to the female that is... Sorry. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. It's Coco. It's a, it's a chocolate dog. That's a chocolate... It's a chocolate... It's a... Excuse me. It's a lilac dog. So there's Daddy. Daddy's a lilac. And that was, by the way, was Big E, Little E, which doesn't make any difference. So that's Daddy. Mum, and by the way, ATA, ATA, 10 points. Okay, bred to a Big B, Little B, NCO, one copy of Coco, EME, one copy of Cream, DD. What are you going to get? Well, let's deal with the tan points first. Um, this one is an L4 as well. This is an L4, so it's a fluffy, fluffy carrier. Uh, blah, 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 ATA, ATA, ATA. It's both ATAs. So, what, so let's talk about the tan points. You're going to get one quarter 
AAs, which is a solid coat color, what's called recessive black, and three quarters are gonna be tan points. So we know that. We know that half the puppies are gonna be L4, and they're gonna be fluffy carriers. We know that half the puppies are gonna be cream. We know that half the puppies are gonna be cocoa. We know that one quarter of the puppies are gonna be testable chocolate. And we know all the puppies, 100% are gonna be blue. So if you do the kind of looking at this, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get blues, of which some of them are gonna be lilacs, of which some of those are gonna be platinums, of which some of those could be new shades. So, you, you know, you can go work the math out and all this, but basically that's what, you know, you, you've got a lot of variety here. I'm not gonna go through all of it because it can take too much time. Uh, somebody likes Chanel's Hercules litter and they say, we wish that you were in the UK. Well, of course I used to be in the UK, but that's 45 years ago. So you're a bit late on that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> what and when, how do you feed puppies? Anna says, pate and caviar. You missed the lobster. You've got to get lobster and steak in there as well. Uh, Someone likes my comment about poo control. TB Bulls. I got a PG on my female. Day six, she was 10.18. So, okay. So day six, she's a basically a 10. was told to produce start, I would wait a day, which is what you did. I would, you know, day, day seven is really early. I'd expect a progesterone level to be something around a 15. And that's good for your first AI. And then what I would do was I would do a gain on day nine. And, and then I would uh, check, check her PG levels. And then decide whether you're going to breed again, then I'll wait. Because day, that, that is really early. But it's not to say it can't happen. Um, there's some more here. Oh, well, there's more to it. My pup, however, did take, and I have confirmed, two, two three pups. CT1 days from AI says my due day is the 17th, uh, which is a Saturday. Would it be safe to pull puppies today? Um, well, actually, I don't say the 17th. I think that the right day to breed her was, well, I don't know what day that was, on the 16th. I think that you're maybe a day late on the 17th, but that's fine. That's a Saturday, which is what you're worried about. Look, you ask if it's okay to pull puppies if the temperature is looking right. Well, I mean, the answer to this is you've got to be careful um, because, well, there was another question here about PG levels, so I'm going to talk about this right now. So somebody asks, like, yeah, I've got to find it. Well, we'll get to the question here, but I'm going to answer the question a different way. I'm going to talk about progesterone levels and um, specifically progesterone levels to do with uh, whelp. And so the general feeling is, is that a progesterone level of less than three is safe to take puppies. And generally that's true. And in fact, I've never been in a situation where I took puppies with a number of three or less and didn't have uh, had problems. So that's true. But I have seen dogs that have had progesterone levels of four and go into labor and start pushing puppies out. So the problem with this, this answer here is, for the most part, it's correct. But what I like to see is the summation of all the things that we can do to the hell with we're in the right place. The, probably the next most, so this is number one in terms of what my reliability factor. This is the number one thing that I think. But number two is, are you approximately 61 days from, from the AI spread that you did? Number three would be temperature has dropped. below 99.0. Number four would be uh, nesting, plus not eating food. And then the last one would be panting. So I wanna see those things. I wanna see at least some of those things. This gets me worried when I see a progesterone level and I haven't seen the other things that are going on. You know, we're day 57, and the temperature hasn't dropped, that worries me. So be careful on this. The point here I wanna make is, is that, you know, we, we have this great faith in progesterone levels in terms of both breeding dogs, 
when to breed them and also when to, uh, to, to do a C-section. And there is a, obviously a correlation between progesterone levels and what the dog's doing, but it's not completely interlinked. You can have progesterone levels that some dogs want to be bred on an earlier progesterone level and someone's in a later. So I just, you know, if you look at the literature, most places where you talk about IDEX machines, they're talking about ovulation is something between a five and a 10. They give a pretty good spread. So although those things might be within a day or two of each other, the point here is, is that it is variable. So that just a simple progesterone level by itself is a little bit problematic. And so just pay attention to that. That's really the point I'm making there. Uh, Mama Iris Izok, I'm, I'm having hard times getting the meds. Um, so she's got a dog that's got aspiration pneumonia. Well, I mean, I went to the vet and the vet said they can't do anything because they're too small. Go to another vet. The vet doesn't know what they're talking about. I mean, what you would typically want to give those puppies is Clavamox. The problem is, is you're not going to get Clavamox without a prescription. Now, there are things like fish mox, which is basically a moxicillin, which is basically the same as that. And you can go get that in places like Chewy, it's for fish. And, uh, you know, it is a moxicillin. It's exactly the same amoxicillin that you and I or a puppy would take. But you're going to have to figure out what the dosage is. And remember, this is an off-label use. So it's not necessarily recommended, and I'm not a vet, so I'm not recommending that you do that. But that's, that's what I do, it's not necessarily what you should do. Um, and then that last, the last question is, Shadow Spitz asks about PG close to three, not below three. This goes back to this PG question I had before. You know, a, there's nothing magical about a PG level of three. I mean, look, I would take a puppy with a PG level of four if it was a small litter and I'd be waiting and she's already, you know, not a day 61, but like day 64. That would be a, okay for me, especially if her temperature drops. So don't get married on this magic number of three. It's close to three and it does vary a little bit by the machine that's used. And it certainly does vary by the dog. So just pay attention to that. That's it for this one. Bye. He encouraged me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Come on,